My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Vault of the Void. Let's continue in Impossible with... Oh, wait a second, which one have we played recently? I think we played Corruption recently, and now it's time to play Sacrifice in Impossible. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I need to work out how those rotations ought to work. Opportunity, uh, Salt Earth 2. Oh, what is this? Opportunity's been changed a lot. Uh, so it's now Salt Earth 2, threshold 6, you unleash 75% corruption. However, now it upgrades to be its original previous. Well, actually, no, its original previous was unleash 50% corruption, Salt Earth 2, threshold 4, unleash 50% corruption. But this is now trigger plus 1, which is actually better. The reason it's better is uh, because now it triggers the Void Stone that's uh, put into it two times over. Also got Soul Tithe 1, apply to Vulnerable, and a Blade of Darkness there. A sidestep in the base deck, interesting. Uh, deal 17 damage, recur one non-random, sorry, a random non-weakness uh, rather, and then Flesh and Blood itself. All right, we have some Soul Tithe support in there. With a Soul Tide version of the deck as well, so Death Strike is actually, it, it, it is something. Power Draw is typically where I would go with this. Knife in the Dark is a way to guarantee some access to slow and uh, weakness. We don't tend to end up running a heavy, heavy, heavy discard deck here. I think it's just power draw. Okay. Uh, void starts with 20% damage taken. Delay block six at the start of each turn. First card played each turn costs two less. First two cards played will trigger an additional time. Okay, so we pushed a little in the direction of doing buffs. Uh, we have... I mean, we have a late merchant that we're definitely going to hit. And we have an early merchant, which we're probably not going to hit. It is theoretically possible, right? We could go up here, across there, down that way, then cut across. So we get both elites and that merchant. Um, but regardless, I think I'm taking the essence. Okay. Inconsequential. Sift 1, block X, equal to the number of the cards in the discard. Soul tax. Soul tax makes a lot of sense for this build. What Lies Waiting is incredible. Uh, so yeah, we're like 100% definitely going up this path. Blade of Darkness. Didn't we get one of those in the base deck? Let's actually have a quick look at the base deck. So we've got the Grasps in here. These also now have... Wait, no, these did have plus one trigger before, right? It was just written differently. It said like trigger plus one times or something like that instead. Uh, we definitely get the... Mm, I'm not really going to want to threshold six myself consistently in these fights. They're also not really going to run long enough for me to consistently do that. I'm going to cut the spirit shield, put the power draw in. Cut a grasp to put a Blade of Darkness in, and then I think for the moment I'm done. I think quite soon we end up putting that Purple Void Stone into something. Well, why quite soon and why not quite now? It's a good question. Grasps are part of the setup build. Plus one triggering on them is typically part of a continual setup. Yeah, let's... Purple Void Stone goes in one of those, happily. Soul Tax Inconsequential, Blade of Darkness, Cycle of Agony, Unleash 50% Corruption, Soul Tithe, one loop. Goes back to the top of the deck after being played. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. So this gives us access to a specific gem every single turn. Probably the draw and discard, and then we can work some discard synergy into the deck, having played this every single turn. Is, there's, there's a couple things that we could do with that cycle of agony. There's the knife in the dark down there that we were interested in previously, a diversion. Curse of plenty, purge of corruption, trigger the void zone as well, bolster down here. I mean, I'm interested in the bolster, but other than that, like, I'm pretty keen with the path that we already have set out. Which does put us clinia with the, uh, the merchant there. We also get this diversion. Now we wait. Discard one and two. Pretend break. No, okay, we're not going to do that. Um, a little darkness. Gain two corruption. Rebound inert. I I very very seldom end up actually multiply using uh, rebound cards. 
Sorry, that, that is to say, to multiply use them over the course of many turns. Uh, and the reason is obviously, like, I, I'm drawing fewer cards as a result of not purging it instead. I could just purge it for an extra energy a lot of the time. Um, and that's something I think about here. What if I just play a little darkness for two corruption and then purge it for an energy, right? So what does this say? This says, uh, gain two corruption, trigger a void stone that you have, and then gain one energy for one card in hand. That's pretty good, right? Uh, there's a spirit shield over there. Mm, charged block, though. If you have overcharge, gain one energy and overcharge one. It is not impossible that we end up with enough overcharge to very consistently produce it. Okay. We'll definitely go to that charged block. There's a treasure and a cursed item. Flesh and blood, soul tax. Down here, shadow utility. Uh, that's hard to avoid. That's hard to avoid. So if we're not avoiding that, how do we get it? That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That way. That's how we get that. We get the soul collector at the very end as well. Very, very useful. We miss out on the flesh and blood. We miss out on the cursed item. We get both of the treasures, but we also get the shadow utility. Shadow utility is going to be a very, very good way to make sure that we have access of slow and weak, specifically in the void fight. I do find myself actually keeping this card in hand. So I previously said that I don't typically end up keeping the cards that I rebound. Uh, this is one that I would keep just to make sure that the Void is slow and weak at least every turn they're attacking. Okay. That looks like pretty maximal value from the floor to us, so... Let's get into it. Root Cutter, Dark Acolyte, and a Void Enchantress. Uh, our ability is gain 50% rage, threshold, reduce soul attack by two, cool. Um, I mean, just double attack the soul, sorry, the throat cutter, get a kill this turn. Purge. Probably should have just purged too. There is a world in which I no longer draw, yeah, any defense this turn. Thankfully, we still do. So this is soul tithe two. So if I played both of these grasps, I would be able to activate the opportunity. I'm gonna... I mean, I don't need to use Sacrifice here at all, in fact. Threshold 7. Yeah, I just need to upgrade these cards to reduce their threshold. These now reduce to Threshold 5. I thought they were Threshold 4 down from 6 before. I thought they matched the opportunities. Um, and if that is the case, then I... I agree. <laughs> Uh, it makes sense to me. I don't really want to remove the Soul Tithe at all, though. Yes. Yes, we get through this fight without utilizing Soul Tithe. Easily, in fact. Um, there's an opportunity left in the deck. Actually, now if I use that and purge this, we're almost guaranteed to draw lethal this turn. Because there are very, very, very few non-aggressive cards in the deck. Wow. We drew all of the non-aggressive cards in the deck. Worst case scenario right here. Uh, but thankfully, should we have drawn the non-aggressive cards in the deck, then we definitely have the ability to block. So it's, it's comfortable either way. Also get to leave the sacrifice for the start of the next combat, should we want it then. Uh, and it's possible we want it then. It might kill the dog in the opening turn, the, the Hellhound. Soul Tithe 1, and then Threshold 7. I want to see. So, yeah, okay, this is now consistent with uh, with Opportunity. So, it seems like now Threshold conditionals are being checked exclusively at the time they trigger on the card, rather than the previous solution where some of them checked at the start of the play of the card, and then some of them checked at the start of the trigger conditional. Uh, I strongly prefer this, as you might imagine. Uh... I mean, upgrade the drawing card. Ooh, we could draw. I think we just need grasps upgraded quickly. For a little bit here. What lies waiting is a pretty good upgrade to Hellmongrel. Hopefully we get the Hellmongrel down as soon as quickly. Oh, yikes. This is actually, like, titanically bad. All I have is Soul Tithe 4 in this opening hand. That's literally all I have access to. 
There you go. Oh! Disgusting. I really hope I draw another Harness Sin. Well, yikes. So, maximum damage I can do this turn is like 10. Uh, I mean, the Forsaken Poppy, I think I have to kill right now. Literally, is just a, an exercise in reducing the incoming damage on myself. Um, I have to use Sacrifice if we're going to do that. So let's start out with Sacrifice. And then we also have to use Harness Sin next in order to make sure we actually manage to full defend. Um, you Ignite for four damage. So actually, if I went left here two times, four and four, right, we block six and six. Uh, so we'd actually be able to get the Cinder Hound off the board. But at the same time, I can always just kill the Cinder Hound last, and it's only 9 damage versus the 11 damage of the uh, Forsaken Poppy over here. This also leaves us with extra energy. We're on Soul Tithe 4 as well, so we're really hoping to draw some sort of a lethal combo here. Yikes at this hand. Just... Ooh, yikes. Okay, I'm going to play this one safe. Good thing I played it safe as well, because we did not get the cards we would have needed to play that aggressively. Okay, we have the 16 incoming here. Now I'm pretty sure I could reach for lethal, right? We kill you in one hit. Uh, and then you in another, and then if I purge, that's 14. Um, if I Blade of Darkness first, then I replace that. That becomes zero cost. I purge. It's fine. Yeah, we can do this. Um, so it's literally Grasp there. Uh, Ooh. Blade of Darkness there. Wait a second. Oh my god. You know what happened? I saw Blade of Darkness, and in my mind's eye, I saw Power Draw. Literally, it was just like, deal small amount of damage, Soul Tithe 1, another effect under that, three lines on the card, purple is its main thing. I've talked about this in STS before, <clears throat> uh, and it's that a lot of what I end up doing when I, uh, when I see cards the first time is I see the art, that one time and then from then on out all i see is broken down quadrants of colors on a card uh and that kind of leads to uh occasional misunderstandings like this oops that's gonna be costly yeah it's gonna be very very costly and it deserves well to be i shouldn't have even attacked again that's that's a little bit of not thinking because tilted right there oh yikes not my best fight <laughs> Certainly not my best fight. Okay, we get a blue void stone, which I do want this in something. Do I specifically want it in Cycle of Agony? It's possible I still want it in Cycle of Agony. We're getting Death's Touch here, which is not only a Soul Tithe card, but it's also a Recur card, as well as a Discard card. So we already have support for the ability to pick up something like, oh, I don't know, this Diversion that's already down here, and get a lot of value out of that. We probably do end up hybridizing into a discard build here. Or at least getting some discard value into our build. Uh, that fire breath, eh? Hmm. The thing is, I need to, like, for 120 HP, I need to hover around Soul Tide 6. Otherwise, I'm just not going to be able to kill the enemies. So, bup, bup, bup. Get him. It's just unfortunate that my own Soul Tide and the enemies burning here are just going to be uh, an incredible amount of incoming damage every single turn, and I'm not really going to have the ability to deal with them. Uh, since these have to be played as the opener, I still have to play it first, even though I now intend to increase my Soul Tide again. Okay, there's the Despair. Here's the incoming damage. Yikes. Uh, we have four Soul Tithe. I could set up and utilize that Grasp this turn, but then I have to not harness any Sins. Or rather, I have to not reduce my Soul Tithe. 
So how much defense do I have on my next turn? Incoming damage next turn is going to be pretty significant. Can I kill next turn? Is that possible at all? So these grafts will all be double triggering by that point. Uh, and this opportunity by itself. I mean, the corruption is not going to be as much as these damage, right? So uh, 24, 24, 24 is 70, uh, 72, 3 less than 75. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can totally do that this turn. So how do we accomplish it? We want to use Harness Sin. We want to use Power Draw and Grasp this turn. Okay, so we go Grasp first. Wait, they're 14 apiece, not 24. Only this Grasp is 24. Oh, God. Uh, okay, I'm getting Rage into this turn then. Literally just to enhance our damage output on that turn so that it doesn't matter when we get to the next. It still probably matters. Okay, yeah, we made our one out of that. Uh, made our one out of that. Made our way out of that, rather. Oh, yike a Rudy's. All right. Uh, we've got Infecti here. Blade of Darkness again. Anything in the base deck that I still need to manage at this point? What Lies Waiting really wants to go into the base deck? Um, I think at this point I'm going to be cutting those opportunities. Those can go back into the deck later. Uh, Sidestep's a little bit interesting here. Death's Touch. Also a little bit interesting here. I'll put Death's Touch in. I had Infecti. Let's go. Uh, 10 incoming damage. Uh, this recurs one at this point. So I'm going to attack. Recur that one right back to hand instantaneously. I could also purge and then attack two more times. Get myself to Soul Time 5 on the opening turn. I need to get a high soul tithe right now because, again, as soon as I draw another Unleash Sin, I'm going to have to play it. So, I need to have some soul tithe left over after that. Oh, that grasp really wants to be played right now, though. Mm. Okay, so if I use Sacrifice, we get 50% Rage. This goes to uh, 36 damage. It's not enough to individually kill a target by itself. It would take three targets down on the board to actually get a success. Okay, fine. I'm going Harness in first then. Then a... Do I power draw? Increases max HP by 10%. So three extra max HP, and you'd probably heal with that as well. You're still within a single target kill. Yeah, I don't think I need to worry about that then. Ooh, Blade of Darkness for vulnerability. Interesting, interesting. Um, I'm probably not going to utilize that here. We'll go Grasp over there. Purge one more and then Grasp in the middle. And then we look to pivot to Killing next turn. While I was waiting. Literally, I should only need like th three cards to do it next turn as well. So you should be fine. Probably end up using the spell next turn as well. So it'll be off cooldown. Okay. 14. Wait. 14 over there as well, naturally. Um, this gives us the ability to draw a single grasp back out of the deck. Hmm. I think I take one more turn before I go for the kill, actually, now. And instead, I will harness Sin first. Damage you. Grasp. Play what lies waiting. Purge three of these and play one of them. We've got a grasp back on top of the deck. High likelihood of getting an aggressive hand. If we don't, we got a hand that's so defensive that we should be able to reasonably defend. Maybe not the entirety of it, but reasonably. There we go. Okay, we're fine. Bow draw goes over on this side. Grasp in the middle and over to the right. Another Blade of Darkness. I don't know if we're in the market for a Blade of Darkness necessarily right now. This cycle of agony. Hmm. 
I do like the idea of the red void stone right now. It's just I do not know what it would even possibly go in. Like, what do we use as a setup ever? I mean, I'd want it to multi-trigger on a grasp. Hmm. What, what do we ideally put in an upgraded opportunity later on, right? As we start using our corruption as our actual core scaling for our damage, what do we start putting in the opportunities to get them super effective? Uh, well, I mean, by that time, our Soul Tide is going to be relatively high and we'll be deep in the fight. Deeper, at least, in the fight. So Yellow Void Stones obviously come to mind. Um, Green Void Stone, no. Purple Void Stone, eh. Black Void Stone, probably not. So yeah, they could benefit from Red Void Stone because they literally only want yellow or blue right now. That said, I think at the moment, I need to focus on just becoming instantaneously more powerful because uh, I, I have worries <laughs> in, in that field. All right, Skeleton Mage. We have no access that I can see so far. Yeah, it's weak and slow. All right. All right, Skelly. At the end of the turn, if you have zero energy, gain overcharge. Second turn, you per uh, sorry, second card you purge in a turn reduces all debuffs suffered by one. And flame shield, which is just uh, X, uh, sorry, uh, block X, where X is the current battle round. Hmm. Wizard hat is interesting because we're already on the line with this charged block. It would make the charged block a lot of an easier card to utilize here. Hmm. Purify a Deedum. All debuffs suffered. So exclusively the things that are counted in the, the debuff tracker. So it won't count Soul Tithe in any way. I think it's Wizard's Hat. I think by the time Flame Shield is good for us. Mm, is that... How many battle rounds do I typically get into a fight, right? Five or six or seven? I think it's Wizard's Hat. Yikes. 16 incoming damage and I have to be guaranteed that I can block all of it, lest the enemy get more frenzy. I think I just grasp, 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 and then uh, hold the two harnesses for the next turn. We also get our overcharge there. Three enemies going to confuse, so they increase their... They attack with Frenzy 1, but I suffer confusion. Confusion's a little bit of a problem for us. Um, in order to negate the effect of the confusion here, I'm going to get one overcharge right now, and then the Wizard Hat's going to give us an overcharge at the end of the turn as well. So we get three energy this turn. Um, I'm going to purge what lies waiting here. Play that Grasp, and then a Harness Sin, purge the Grasp. Maybe I shouldn't have purged the Grasp. Wizard's Hat makes that a little bit more of a tenuous decision point. Recur 1. Okay, well, I'm taking damage this turn, it turns out. As it turns out, it's time to be damaged. So, Blade of Darkness for the vulnerability before I Death Touch. Extra 6 damage. Sure. I can pull back defense, but there's no way I can pull back enough defense here. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do instead... Is just try and flat out kill next turn. Three harness sins on the bottom of the deck. Well, okay, I don't have to flat out kill next turn. The enemy's not attacking this turn. And then... Triple Persian kill. We should be fine. Six energy available this turn. A lot of very, very useful cards still left in the deck. Yes, you've... Uh, 
Limited our capacity. Oh no. 22 damage per grasp, though. Lands our kill. This merchant can mean so much to us. Enough! Ooh. There's also kneecaps for a lot of weak. Enough is something we desperately need in this deck. Literally, extra overcharge and a large block number. Two things that I desperately, desperately want in this deck right now. Um, it's unfortunate that it's up against kneecaps. We are going online to take that shadow utility. So I'm going to take the enough. Cover the bases that I don't have covered yet. Cut a harness sin in order to introduce it to the deck. Um, with the amount of energy we're starting to generate, that sidestep is starting to seem valuable. I'll cut a grasp to put that in. Tending a little more defensive previously because I tended more aggressive in the initial space. Knife in the dark. It's a swift attack. I would have a lot of ease using this if I could get combo of some kind. Uh, but without that, I find it real hard to pay that cost. I mean, I, I am an overcharging build, so maybe energy tends to end up meaning less to us. And we do utilize that later on. No reason to write it out. It could easily be what we end up using. Okay. Um, so I miss out on overcharge. If I play anything here. Sorry, if I purge anything here, that is. Um, but if I purge the entire... No, I don't want to purge the entire hand. The rest of the deck isn't super defensive. I'll get two. Thank you. Well, uh, enough is exactly what I was looking to draw there. Okay, I'm probably going to be a bit pretty aggressive off the back of that because that Walt Lies Waiting could end up getting us the Grasp Triggers. So let's Walt Lies Waiting first. Yep, okay, we're in the uh, realm of grasp. Triggers now. I'll purge two harness sins, playing enough, getting the full defense on myself, then kill the mainliner, getting myself two more stacks of overcharge. Uh, purge one more card, and then set you down. We get a sacrifice next turn. I'll purge that because we're looking for an aggressive turn. We're probably going to end the fight next turn. We may need sacrifice to do it, but we might not as well. Grasp, darkness, and grasp. Never mind, we have to kill. Grasp, darkness, grasp. Okay, over to the diversion. The diversion seems like a very, very good card to take and upgrade, but it's contingent exclusively on whether or not I end up upgrading the death touch. Which seems like a good upgrade, honestly. It's it's like a lot of soul tithe for a single card, as well as gives me more control over the rest of the cards that I have access to, including defense, which I often need. Like, th think about it like this. These graphs are really, really good in the late first cycle and second cycle onwards. This, uh, this death touch is good when the grasps aren't. And I'm going to need things like that to help smooth. Oh, okay. Hang on. Gonna need things like that to help smooth out the fight for me. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven. Uh, vulnerable, yes. Vulnerable, yes. Grasp, grasp. Beautiful. So effectively, what I've just said here is Harness Sins mean significantly less to me than damage in this fight, obviously. Uh, take the do-over and cut another Harness Sin. Because this enemy doesn't attack, we literally just need to kill them fast enough. So my only defense is against my own Soul Tithe. Actually, my only defense is against my own Soul Tithe means I should still include a couple. Oh, okay. Good draw, what lies waiting? Good draw. Sidestep is going to be very useful in the future. One, two, 
five, two, three, and then I get to double play that. Okay, I'm gonna purge the sidestep and just go for it. Okay, knife in the dark and then grasp, grasp. Um, you know what? I'm gonna knife in the dark after defending myself here. We've got another turn. In fact, I can even set up vulnerability on vulnerability and then get my wizard hat to trigger at the end of the turn. That's definitely correct. Oh, you're carrying in fear for another turn. Thank you. Very kind of you. You typically don't. You usually flee on that turn in my experience. All right. Uh, one, two, grasp out of the deck. One of the Blades of Darkness. One of the do-overs. And then... Uh, diversion? Is it already time to put Diversion in the deck as a, as a free defend of a kind? I don't think so. Two Harmon Sins back in there. And two more. We're even on aggression defense right now. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm comfy with this moving forward. Charged block. Mm, I still want it. But more than that, I really just want the relic that's behind you. Bruce. Okay, so vulnerability doesn't matter anything in this fight. Let's take the knife in the dark out. Let's take the blade of darkness out. Uh, Duova, recurry random. I mean, that effectively means this costs one less, but I don't really want to be recurring randoms. This fight will be a little longer. I could put a spirit shield in here and I probably won't be this... Uh, distraught by it. Or distraught as a result, rather. Move goes to the top of it. Okay, cool. That'll sort me. Each time you gain salt, I block two. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a really, really, really outlandishly good one in my mind. Happily purge those two and just wait for the enough next turn. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <sighs> Death's touch to bring the enough directly back into hand. I like it. I like it. We'll play enough. Purge a harness sin. Play Death's touch, bring the enough back into hand. Purge the other two cards and then wait again. Getting my soul tied to reasonable degrees here, so I should be able to. Yep, start double triggering offense. Uh, let's go double grasp for even more overcharge. Even more, even more overcharge. Double grasp again at the very end. That spirit shield is suddenly looking like good defense for us. I either draw draw or I draw the spirit shield, so I should be totally fine this turn. The thing is, we are getting now quite close to the turns where I'm no longer going to be fine. So I'm going to start managing my Soul Tithe a little bit more. Play that there. Let's use What Lies Waiting now, I think. Nice. That's enough Soul Tithe for me to feel comfortable about using Sacrifice now. And then I purge those three cards. Double play that Grasp. Double play that Grasp. And then a Spirit Shield at the very end. Probably should have purged the Spirit Shield. I didn't think I... Uh, or I forgot that I was going to be getting all the extra block there. Choose two cards to discard. One Grasp, one Harness Sin. Because this is clearly just going to be Harness Sin, Harness Sin. After a Grasp. How aggressive are we getting here? We need to be more defensive. Double defensive on that and then hit. Actually try and lower the soul tide just a touch. Okay. Hell of a lot of incoming damage, right? I can play enough. I can play death touch. I can get the enough back into hand, right? But then I can't play the extra enough. So here I think it has to be harness sin... Enough. 
Purge, Death's Touch, Pay, Power Draw, Purge, Sidestep, Double Play, Grasp. We only end up taking two damage this turn. We set up for lethal next turn, likely. So missing out on perfect fights, but we seem to have a pretty good read of where our power level is at. Because fights tend to end around when I figure they will. Also, the turn after the fight ends tends to reveal that it would kill me. Uh, build up, deal three damage, death strike one, salt type two, overcharge one. I mean, it's it's kind of a natural fit for this build. We have a lot of vulnerability access in the knife in the dark, so yeah, I'm more than happy to take that build up. I probably end up putting that build up in this deck. Um, zero cost for overcharge one is pretty significant when we are as heavily built into overcharge as we currently are. That charged block seems very yes, though. Like, I, I really, really want that, too. I could easily put a, a Black Void Stone in this. Block 30, gain two overcharge for two energy. The problem I'm running into right now is that all these grasps seem more efficient upgrades. All Eyes Waiting wants to be upgraded pretty desperately too. Hmm. Dang. Purge block 5. I mean, Spirit Shield could be totally reasonable with that upgrade. I do avoid that upgrade probably significantly more than I ought. Hmm. I like doing a lot of things actively. Like, in an ideal world, I get to upgrade the build-up right now, but I don't think it actually helps me yet. I think it's quite a while, in fact, before it's better than just upgrading a grasp. So, fine. Do that. I'm also going to do what lies waiting. Let's go to the Dark Isle. Um, so I'm very unlikely to give the souls, given that we... Uh, maybe I'm likely to give the souls, actually. Eight souls. Possibly two souls from this battle. Possibly another two souls from this. So what? We go back up four, down to 12, so we don't even get a random relic from that one. That is to say, from the Soul Collector. The thing is, I don't know if I have 20 by the time of that Soul Collector either. I really don't want the voids. First time you reduce to 0 HP, remove this item and heal back to 30%. I'm more than fine with that. I'd go so far as to say I'm damn near ecstatic with it. Uh, let's go for the attacking ones first. Ooh. Do I really want to power draw here? How important is it that I get that deep in the deck that quickly? Pretty important. I can purge these two and then double grasp. Yeah, we're almost even at a kill. Um, in fact, let's get you as close as we can and then focus on a different target. We have 20 damage incoming. We should have a reliably relatively defensive draw here, which we do find immediately after saying it. Harness, 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 purge, grasp, grasp. Seems good. Because they're only 40% each, we still do need to kill all of them at the same time unless we want, like, a giant respawn, and we don't want a giant respawn, that is. What lies waiting is in the next hand. Ooh. Okay, enough is easy here. Double purge those two and then grasp over in this direction seems the right play to. Um, in fact, not only is it, I'm also going to sacrifice this turn. There we go. 
We're probably two turns away from the kill. Uh, I go aggressive. We go aggressive in response to this, right? Yeah, 14 over there, 14 over there, power draw on the other side, power draw, cool. So that, then 14 there, then 14 there, purge a harness sin, and next turn we draw lethal. Almost invariably. Then nothing after that. This is what happens when you say almost invariably. The game seeks to prove wrong. That said, we are going to full block. <laughs> uh, now I have to deal with more. Why did I do that? Definitely want to pop a harness sin in it enough here. Just gonna take that target out. I don't want them getting any stronger. Oops. Okay, cool. Some defense in the next end of the absolute least, but yeah, most of the damage is me to me. Me at me. Why are you doing damage at me? Yeah, that'll set up for this kill easily. But unfortunately, we will take that. 10, excuse me. Uh, Death's Touch to return. I mean, that grasp was probably lethal after that, right? 12, 27. No, it might not be. Um, yeah, it's 12 two times over. Second one has 25% rage on it, so it's 12 and 16, it's 28. It's not enough. I uh, guess I defend as best I can then. Which interestingly is pretty much the same play. Because Saltide defends this. There we go. Got our kill. We did get two souls there. Ideally, we get at least two souls in this uh, this area too. No souls. Yeah, that was a problem. That's nah, not helpful. Duck and Weave is exciting, but I think I need Bolster. I need more Soul Tithe management, especially Soul Tithe management that I don't have to play at the start of the turn. Butcher's Blade. First attack card blade each turn will rebound. Yeah, that's, that's the worst. I really wish I could take that. Uh, each time you complete a non-perfect combat, increase this item's value by one. Increase the rate that void stone bars refill by 20% for each count on this item. Eh. The start of each fight, heal five. That's not That's not extremely low value for us. Anti-attrition is 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 something. Black void stone anti-attrition. It, it, it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot, a lot worse than those two. It could be worse. It could be worse than those. That's so good. Jerry. That was more of a Jerry voice, but then I said Jerry and Jerry's voice. It's not going to work out like that. Let's get a bolster in there as well. Um, charge block really feels premium, but so does What Lies Waiting. We can get off to such a good start with the What Lies Waiting. Ah, no. You can't, you can't ignore the power level of that What Lies Waiting hit there. It's just, it's not, it doesn't make sense to. Uh, for these other ones, I'm still holding out. Shadow Utility is quite, uh, pretty likely to carry one of them. Maybe the Sift Stone. Void more, get stronger when I purge cards. It's fine, I only purge most of my... Uh-oh. Uh... Da -da 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 -da. I mean, we obviously keep the enough in hand for the next turn. It gets more AP as I purge. Honestly, I think that means that I just go and ignore any purge limitations. Uh, 
I don't really care if you increase your ace, uh, your AP. I need to purge those cards to get through. Oh my god, this what lies waiting is deeply problematic if we're going to be doing this, but let's do it. There we go. That's all the cards I have in the deck. So, which of them do I want to play? That's a great question, isn't it? Uh, let's get rid of all the harness sins and such. Do I have any vulnerability in hand? Oh my god, I took out all the vulnerability. Oh, I didn't replace it yet. <laughs> it's not good. Um... Let's use a par draw first. Then sacrifice, and then we just go grasps. I mean, I could death touch back a grasp for more rage. That actually seems quite effective here. Let's touch back more rage. Use the rage. And then do so much damage that the enemy almost invariably dies next turn. Yep. I feel pretty confident about how I handled that one. Uh, this upgrading to get the second Rico is what will make it a viable card to be playing next floor. Hmm. Charge block does still need to go into the deck. Bolster also, it gets five on its block. That's a really significant increase. I think our next thing is going to be increasing the value of our block cards. So you know what? Yeah, let's, just, let's get the bolster. Um, I'm also now going to take one of those out for a blade of darkness. Get Actually, you know what? I'll put the knife in the dark in there instead. Better source of vulnerability right now. Diversion needs an upgrade. Do you want to go in the deck yet? So Shadow Utility, Diversion, and the upgrade to Death's Touch should all ideally happen around the same time. We have very little other discard trigger, right? We have one thing that discards, and then we have a fairly large amount of other things that benefit from being discarded. Um... Considering I generate block from generating soul ties right now, I'm feeling less confident that the charged block needs the black void stone. Instead, I think I might want to save that for a power or something later on. Fairly well-rounded fight. The king. Okay, so I don't need to slow them unless they end up uh, gaining frenzy at any point. Weak would be nice, but I don't really want to include that card just for the weak. I, I think I'm already pretty well set for this fight. If I'm not, then it betrays effectively a core misunderstanding of this fight. You're enraging to increase your AP by 6. Yeah, so it's definitely a weak kind of centered approach you could have taken otherwise. Uh, Purge the Hunter Sin. Do while he's waiting again. Okay. Let's purge those harness sins, the obvious purges. We want to keep the enough for the next turn, so I end up, uh, I think, purging also the bolster. We'll set up vulnerability and then start going the grasps. I feel like I'm almost certain to just barrel down the line of the, the skeleton king by itself here. Mm-hmm. This ought to be quite demonstrative as to why. Watch that. Just play more damage, I think, here. Yeah. The wizard had to go off, then we have the enough next turn. So we actually get three energy at the end of this. Okay. I mean, the spirit shield looks decent. But if I purge these two cards, I can then just sidestep and enough. To already be complete here. And not only can we do that, but we can also return an opportune card to our hand. We have that grasp going off next turn. 
Yeah, so this would very much just be this grasp. And then next turn we use the corruption. We hit out with those two grasps. We have no vulnerability left on the uh, Skeleton King at that point, which is unfortunate. Um, so 27, 24, but it'll have 50, so 36. 27, 36 is uh, 63. And then 21 on 63 is 84, just short. Uh, but if we use Sacrifice first, we're fine. Cool. Two upgrade points. Two upgrade points. And we have so many cards that we still want the upgrades on. Um, I, I did say that we were going to pivot to focus on our defense. I could easily upgrade that sidestep to have gain one energy, and then I could give it uh, the Black Void Stone. Use it as a way to gain two energy in a hand as well as generate a really, really significant amount of defense. Because I have high overcharge as well, this isn't capped at 10 block. Hmm. What cards am I not using in my backpack at the moment? These opportunities? Uh, that's a good argument against, uh, the, the previous plan, isn't it? The fact that these opportunities are currently languishing in obscurity in the deck. Also, Shadow Utility doesn't rebound yet. Purging it from hand is even valuable. We could play it and then purge it, and then it's zero cost. Apply one slow, one weak to the enemy, reduce your soul tithe by one, also trigger the Void Stone. I think we are going to need slow enough times next floor that I think we may even need the rebound on Shadow Utility. I think it needs to be upgraded. And I think now that it's been upgraded and has a discard synergy itself, does that mean we now go into a discard build? I actually don't think so yet. I think it's not even... it Like, the fact that it can also be triggered on Purge and oftentimes will be triggered on Purge, I think means... Maybe we're moving away from this guard again, despite the value of Death's Touch. I think the value of Death's Touch that I was talking about was its initial high Soul Tithe value. But we're kind of generating that same impact out of the What Lies Waiting right now. So I don't think I need both. So I already hit one of our upgrades. Uh, I, I, th I think opportunity should be really, like really ought to be one of the upgrades here. Because grasp stops scaling outside of rage. This is now still scaling. This is important scaling, in fact. Uh, duck and weave gives us block eight, sift one, also gives us an upgrade. I'm keen on that. Um, battle cry, apply two weak to all enemies. Hmm. Wow. Really don't like this path. Is there a post down here and a kneecaps? I like, okay. What do I desperately want from this act? I want that battle cry, and then I want to put the black void stone in it. Battle cry with the black void stone, four turns of weak and slow to all enemies. Sometimes you just play that once per fight, and that's you. You, you did it. You handled the fight. Um, so 100. That's 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 a guarantee. Let's let's call mark that. Recur one, discard one, gain two corruption, upgrades to also rebound, but it gains one less corruption after the upgrade. There's soul block over here. Discard to gain corruption and block. Yeah, yeah, there's more discard synergy support on this floor, certainly. Exploit for extra rage if he uses the opener. Second chance, null and void. Uh, probably, again, not going to be using that. I don't think I am going heavily into the discard build. So if I'm not going heavily into the discard build, how do I get value out of this floor, right, is what I'm asking. And the big reason I'm asking is because it seems like these two are mutually exclusive. If I go to this area, then by necessity, I have already visited or I have chosen not to by going to this merchant and then going down, go to the Dark Mime area, so it'll disappear. 
So I don't have the ability to take this zigzag as well as that Dark Mime. However, it seems to me it's quite likely our parting is something along the lines of Null and Void. Do I really want that Null and Void? So I don't need that repost. Wait, uh, that treasure is mutually exclusive with this recovery. I actually can't decide my path right now. Uh, Soul Collector definitely has to be part of the path. 100%. We're definitely going to have enough souls by the time we get there. Um to make extremely good utilization of that area. Definitely, definitely on board with that. Um, almost certainly afterwards, I end up going, but, 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 we miss out on Curse of Plenty, but we get a Stonesmith. We get also a fair few more fights. Uh, get extra value out of those. I think based on what I do in this cursed item area, I will decide whether or not I go to the shrine because it's possible I go here and I get a void and then I decide to immediately remove the void from the deck. I am more than happy to remove a single void despite the ability to remove two at this point. It also seems like what I'm doing with the black void stone is holding on to it specifically until we get to that battle cry. Every time you purge a card, you'll gain a corruption. Also, you'll be able to remove void stones from your... Okay. So both versions of, uh, of this character can do this. Oops. All right. Well, then. Hmm. My bad. I definitely should have just put these in things before. I'll do it now. Um, growing pains, y'all. Growing pains. I, I'm still learning the game. And things like this especially, I'm definitely still learning. Okay. Neat. So, opportunity isn't actually a bad idea to give the... Black Void Stone 2, because by the time I use Opportunity, I usually want to use two of them. So sure, we can just sit in there for a little bit. Then a Blue Void Stone. I did want that actually ultimately in Shadow Utility. I don't know if there's anything here that I do want to guarantee in my opening hands, so I'm actually kind of fine not to use that one though. I may end up actually just upgrading the Stuck and Weave right now. Pyamite and the Pyre. I actually suspect I'm very good at this fight. I might... There might be something going wrong in my head there, though, but I, I do think I'm uniquely capable here. So don't let me down, me. Demonstrate the validity of the thing you just said. Definitely should have been attacking the other Pyamite because this one can give us a blaze and this one can attack. So next turn, it could be relevant. Well, I mean, with this might end up removing the burning heads. It's a little more complicated than that. Uh, remove. That Dark Mime is probably duping what lies waiting. Unless we have something core otherwise that we want by that point. Um... I could happily play the opportunity two times here. Play that two times and then play a bolster afterwards or some such. Mm -hmm. Bolster, because then I can purge two cards, get back down to burning zero. Just keep trying to manage that resource as best we can. Um, so we've got Death Strike 1 up. This is 36 damage by itself. Um, I'm actually just going to use the Sacrifice and make it 54. Kill instantaneously. Wait. What did Death Strike say? Death Strike. It will trigger plus one times. Okay, so effectively the grass was played for trigger plus two. Uh, rather than this grass was played and then another of this grass was played, right? So that's, all right. So plus one trigger is the way to avoid cards having those kind of like, uh, or, or trigger conditionals are the way to avoid like nested trigger in multiple plays of the card in multiple triggers in etc etc kind of scenarios that go nutty uh let's charge some block here because then i can grasp happily 
I'm also going to double perch here to get rid of all of the rest of our burning, but also to try and set up for... Yep, this what lies waiting that remains in the deck. Uh, I mean, we also have a science step that I'll use first. Then what lies waiting. Two times over. Okay, and now I'm pretty much just looking for lethal. It seems quite likely I have it in this hand. 31, neat. Uh, 27 over there. Sets us up already for our kills on the other two. Yeah, that's 50, so I can just double that up and kill the pile. Neat. And then I leave myself open for basically however I want to win now. Okay, there's, there's a grasp. That could help. I'll play that. There's another grasp. That could help. I'll play that and then win. Okay, the upgrade point. Which of these am I playing consistently? But none of those I'm playing consistently that I really want to upgrade. Which of these am I playing, or would I play most consistently? That Blade of Darkness... That two Soul Tithe is two block, right? Too vulnerable means something to us. I wouldn't be surprised if ultimately I want two Blades of Darkness in the deck instead of two of those Grasps. It's 50% extra damage. And it stacks with rage. I also just don't feel right upgrading it yet, though. It's not like I'm missing defense right now. That said, <laughs> you don't want to realize you're missing defense, right? You always want to be proactive about that one in particular. I think I might actually want a second opportunity now. Our corruption is getting pretty high pretty quickly, and the grasps are not keeping up pace. Come on. Every fifth time you purge a card, block eight. Hmm. I just don't know if I can justify that. Every fifth time. I do purge a lot of cards, but they also generate a lot of block. But I also don't want to have to use my own cards to generate block, so fifth time I purge a card, purge a uh, block eight seems good. I do purge a decent ish amount of cards. Do I? The Void More Fight would say yes, but the deck's evolved since then. We have one turn where we purge a lot of cards, definitely. Uh, it's just whether or not we have many like that. And whether or not block eight means anything to us. Because it's it's possible entirely that the three souls ends up getting us another relic down here, right? I'm going to destroy it and get the three souls. And because I destroyed it, I'm not going to go down to that shrine. So now I'm going to lay out my map pathing. Imprint, Shadow Dancer, and Smash. Add two upgrades to three copies of the next attack played to hand. That is very valuable. But for us, not really. Not hugely. Shadow Dancer, Soul Tithe 2, Rage 50%, Death Strike 1. Happy to take that. Not going to put it in the deck yet, though. Hey! Oh my god, a secret room? Oh, no. Oh, we... Game? This kills the run. I, like, I desperately want it. They're all rares. You can use those rares to define your run. Self-inflicted agony in particular would be incredible. Um, but... 
Missing out on this relic as well as specifically Battle Cry, our best plan for consistent generation of slow and weak is hard. That is difficult to do. I think it's impossible. I'm really sad I couldn't take the value of that room. Berserk Rune Priest and the Runic Pillar. I don't really have that many zero costs in the deck, so I don't think I'm cutting anything here. Let's build some Soul Titan on the opening turn. That would be something along the lines of literally just play go uh, the opportunity twice as well as Grasp. Save the bolster in hand for the next time. So I double purge these, I get up to four energy next turn. If I purge this, then play this, I get up to three energy next turn. Okay, yeah, because the overcharge. So I was, I was just trying to figure out if there was some play around overcharge that I could do here that was more clever than just straight up purging. Evidently not, or there is a play that's uh, more clever than that, but I haven't figured it out. Uh, interesting, interesting. You have enough soul tones to start going off. It's always a good position to be in. Probably end up leaving myself with that bolster in hand for the next turn, so let's start purging the cards that are obvious purges here. It typically is the Berserker that wants to die first. So I'll, uh... uh that's my bad. I probably should have used that first. I'll play along. It's 42 by itself in that single opportunity right now. Nice. In fact, yeah, between these two, we already have the kill. <sighs> Knife and a dark for some... Vulnerability set up for the next turn. Perch these two. Shadow utilities available in the next hand. Hopefully I find a uh, grasp or two. Okay. Let's play this harness in out of the hex. Get a grasp over on that line and a bolster afterwards. It reduces Soul Tithe. Slow and Weaken. We're about to invoke Ancestors. So actually, hmm, this Slow and Weaken is a significant amount of damage reduction possible. Fine. Use that there. And then... Actually going to purge the other one. Doesn't look like a turn where we're going to generate a ridiculous amount of defense. So I can already generate 30 out of hand. Let's do that. But a harness sin, power draw over in this side. Nice. And purge, purge, enough. Purge, purge. And here's hoping I get to kill the ring pill uh, pillars before we get the next attack from them. Spirit Shields is already enough block for this turn, so I'm pretty happy. Go, 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 go. Let's also sacrifice here because it would be ideally nice to actually kill all the enemies. 22, hey, it's perfect. Okay, so we can't kill all of the enemies on the board. One, two. But we can significantly decrease the incoming damage next turn and almost certainly set up lethal next turn. Got him. Come on, give me a good relic. Otherwise, I'm going to feel real bad. Just real doo-doo about it all. Okay, that live with uh, block Voidstone. Very, very, very excited to see that starting to be generated. Cultus Ward, each bane and days you suffer, delay block four. That's only important if the enemies are... Uh, yikes. Um, that's only important if I'm specifically going up against a bunch of enemies that have Banes and Dazes, because I'm not really going to be doing it to myself. Uh... 
No, you just power up rather than really like dazing me a bunch. See as I every second fight we get the stealth for the first turn. I like the idea of that, but emergency button on uh, battle round four. All the enemies are too vulnerable, too weak, and too slow. That is often going to be all the vulnerability, weak, and slow I need in a fight. Save your know, boss fights. Let's uh, lie waiting here a couple times. Interesting. We've lain waiting a bit, and it uh, seems to have returned dividend. Am I really starting damage train already? Yes, because if I don't start the damage train, I can never kill the enemy. I grow my damage by dealing damage, is, is what I'm saying there. Um, I may end up purging even the bolster here. 35, 34, but that grows the other one. Yeah, I'm actually set up for lethal already. What lies waiting is uh, quite powerful when you <laughs> when you give it a black void stone. This is why I like draw so much. I mean, it's draw and it's accomplishing something else, but it's it, it would be silly to ignore how much of that impact is the fact that it is one card drawing eight. Sure, it's four energy, but Four of that energy is paid off by purging the cards that I've drawn. Council. Mm. This one, we just want to worry about our setup, I think. Okay. I'm going to use Shadow Utility here. Honestly, literally just for the draw discard. Okay, I feel better about that. Now I'll purge it. And then just play a fair few of these soul tithing cards, I guess. Cool. That'll do. I've left knifed in hand actually though. Don't really want the vulnerability until the second uh, cycle of the deck though. Lies waiting still lies waiting. I don't know if opportunity is really where I'm gonna ultimately want to go with this. Do you like charged block though? We can't turn and burn yet. So far from being able to do that, in fact. What lies waiting is in the next hand, almost certainly. You know what? Fine, then. We've got one more round of the enemies possibly attacking. This is fine. I knew even if we didn't get what lies waiting, we had good enough defense. Yeah, okay, cool. This is actually possibly even better for us. Okay, uh, our corruption is now up to 20. There goes the opportunity. I forgot about Tormented Whisper. Ugh. Okay, that's a lot worse now. Uh, okay, well, let's double up on the What Lies Waiting. That's 100% of the time happening here. We'll use Sacrifice at the start of this turn as well, because that's also 100% of the time happening here. We'll purge two of the, three of the Harness Sins, because guess what? You're right. If you guess that that's happening 100% of the time here, then well done. You, uh, you got that one right. Um, we will actually probably be generating enough hits on the enemies to even get... Oh. Hmm. 
my bad. I thought uh, we were still fighting. Um, but as it turns out, uh, we won a while ago and I didn't recognize. I could have used the bolster and even won that turn. Not that it ends up being relevant. Yeah, that emergency button actually may be exactly what we needed. In fact, if I saw the emergency button before I saw the secret room, maybe I would have gone to the secret room still. Uh, oh well. Hey, speaking of cards in the deck, um, let's get the battle cry in there. Uh, actually, hang on. Okay, I do get an opportunity to upgrade it eventually. Battle cry, get back out of the deck. I'll, uh, I'll re-include you when you're necessary. So we've got proactive defense. We've got reactive defense. We've got scaling damage. We have scaling defense, but the scaling defense scales to a certain point and then suddenly stops. So semi-scaling defense of some kind. What I need. Sift three. Reduce salt type by one for each weakness discarded. Purge or discard sift one. No. Not interested, actually. Cursed Blade over here, deal 9 damage. Rage, uh, rage sorry, 25%. Soul Tithe 1, Siphon to trigger plus 1 times. I don't know about that. Maybe I just, maybe I've just been too conservative with my usage of Siphon, which is to say I've never used a Siphon card in this game. And in this game, it's, it's worth noting, like, it's not uh, analogous to an Exegos card, because a lot of the time you can't generate energy after playing your Exos card. But here, you can play this and then you can purchase another card from your hand and it'll be able to uh, capitalize on it. That said, it triggers, like, I mean, even if it triggers five times over the course of the turn just because I have a bunch of overcharge, isn't that incredible? Isn't that great? Isn't that exactly what we want? I do lower the amount of money that I'm ultimately gonna have for the upcoming Void Stone. I could just give this a rage, a, a rage token, and it'd be incredible. Sure. It's uh, it's actually being included on the basis that it is rare, and I've never used it before. That's uh, that's that's how it made its way in here. Remove that void stone. Pop that one into the cursed blade. Take a grasp out of the deck. Put the cursed blade back in. Uh, these harness sins are starting to feel really bad. I'm, I'm purging them almost all of the time that I draw them, which tends to, I mean, take that out for the duck and weave, should have done that ages ago, which tends to point in the direction of maybe wanting to replace them. I'm still not at the position where I know where that, uh, that green void stone goes. And, like, to the point that I don't want it in anything right now. A dark mime. So you could charge me eight souls to dupe a card or a void. Um, my dupe is pretty obvious. It's this one. We'll see. We'll see what you'll make us pay for it. Nine souls to duplicate or two voids. I think I take the nine souls. And then I think I just go for the medium or the lower relic over here and be fine with it. Because this card is more impactful than uh, any of our relics. Yep. Yep, that one's going into the deck. Let's cut another Harmless Sin for it. Especially with the, the new Siphon card, this seems definitely the way I want to go. Oh, hello, opening hand. What lies waiting? Burge of Harnessin, what lies waiting again? Interesting. Interesting. Um, this Cursed Blade is... Uh, interesting. One, two, three. Set up vulnerability on that target. Four, five, six. Set up a Cursed Blade on that target. 250% rage. Eh, it's good damage there. It's good damage there as well. Um, purge the shadow utility. Use draw there and then purge that draw and then play a grasp over on the left. 
No, because I don't want to kill a target unless I... Or rather, I, I, I do want to just kill a target. Yeah. I was anchoring around the idea of, like, some giant cost of, of over-utilizing that damage there, but it's we don't really have a huge cost to it, especially when we end up doing something like this. Cool. What's that? Oh, Kessa Blade's still in there. Dang. Uh, do I want to rage this turn? The, the reason we can do this, by the way, is extremely the human shield, because I'd never have to play defense after I do that. As long as I play enough of my aggressive cards, I'm fine. Uh, 35 over in that direction. Now let's, let's, let's pl uh, power draw first. Just one. Fine. 37 two times over. Well, actually, that'll kill you in the second play. Yeah, it'll be 41 then. Mm -hmm. And then we can grasp. That's right, an opportunity. Double purge these and then kill next 10 with a giant cursed blade. Yep, cursed blade definitely has value in this deck. Especially with the giant amount of draw that I do. It, it just makes sense. Uh, is there anything that this deck is still missing with that in mind? Death Strikes won't double the impact of them. They'll just give one more to the impact of them. I I don't even think I put any Death Strike back into this build at this point. Only really incidental Death Strike seems like it's uh, the way for us. Duck and Weave has value. It does. But I also, like... Let's think about it. Hang on. Let's think about it differently. What stops me? How about that? What's what ends me? Uh, not enemies that have just a giant HP pool and I can't uh, chug through it. Uh, times where I cannot generate enough block to justify the amount of soul tithe that I that I generate very very early on. Uh, oh god, that seems to say that part of what we're missing is soul tithe. Oh, never mind. But that's 100%. Uh, not, not even a question. That's uh, exactly the card that we take. That's exactly the card that we upgrade. Uh, it wants a Black Void Stone very badly. It can have the one from Opportunity. It can't have the one the other ones have. Um, got the Cursed Blade with the plus 25% again. Uh, the Yellow Void Stone. I mean, look, Yellow Void Stone could easily just go into an Opportunity now. Opportunity is often a card that I want to play. Uh, pretty early on now. Okay. So you're going to here holding 15. Execution order. When enemies below 50% HP, play through the vulnerable to them. It's good. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, rations. Whenever you suffer days cards, delay block 8. Eh. Rusty Scythe. Each time you gain corruption, deal 2 damage to a random enemy. This made more sense a while ago. I don't think this makes much sense for us anymore. Two damage from a random enemy doesn't... Uh, doesn't really scale that well in the late game. And I gain corruption, uh, what, like 20 times a turn? This is 40 damage. Every turn as a relic. Ryan, what are you saying? Can you, can you actually avoid that? I'm trying to make the case for this yellow void stone instead. I... Don't think I should. I'm going to take the Rusty Scythe. Exalted. Flesh. Rotting Gut Fiend. No change to the deck here. Lovely opening draw for the Battle Cry right there. Um, let's purge a Duke and Weave. Double play those for a significant reduction in incoming damage. Um... I also think I should probably play the Corruption. I'm going to play Power Draw, then Purge, Knife in the Dark, and then play Corruption. The idea here is literally just increasing my Soul Tide. I don't want to have a turn next turn that I don't draw either what lies waiting, and suddenly I'm like, oh no, I can't do anything because I have no Soul Charge. 
which is how I speak, apparently. I can easily just bolster this turn. Yup. Alright. I'm gonna bolster and then double play this opportunity. Purge two more cards. Get me even more corruption. Cool. 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 Uh, so first I'm gonna what lies waiting and then what lies waiting. It's interesting how that one worked out. Uh, and then I'm sin, push those two. Uh, push that as well, and then maybe even enough, and then what lies waiting, and what lies waiting again. Cool. Now, we've got the Cursed Blade play. Unfortunately, we don't have much overcharge yet. So, overcharge theming in this deck has actually kind of disappeared. Noticed that a while ago. Um, I'm happy to get rid of the battle cry right now, especially. Get rid of the duck and weave. Harness sin easily. Another harness sin and a bolster. The thing is, I just need the cursed blade to be able to hit someone for all of its triggers. So you happen over there. Let's purge two more cards. Okay. We now have the ability to kill you to wait, hang on, 84. Okay, yeah, we're fine. Kill there. And the other one also died somehow. I don't I don't know what killed the other one. They were about to die regardless. This is fine. I just don't know how they died. Okay. Do any of these still contribute to what I'm doing in the run? The opportunity does, because it's scaling damage, right? Okay, fine. Uh, you'll be a replacement for the final remaining grasp in the deck. I like this kind of like changing of pace as you go to the positions where you actually really need to be scaling. Uh, we could get another upgrade, but we're having difficulty really assigning those at this point, so I'll go to the Stonesmith instead. There's a Black Void Stone that I'm going to be taking and rolling away with. Uh, the Black Void Stone, like, even the worst thing I can put a Black Void Stone in right now is incredible. Just put in an opportunity, double the damage we do with an opportunity. I mean, it's really hard to argue that's not incredible. Get him. So I guess we're going to the Dance of Darkness here for what? Just for incrementing the Void power? I don't know about that. Okay, no more What Lies Waiting, but we do get a still very reasonable opening turn. Um, I'm quite likely to sacrifice this turn as well, in fact. Do that early on. Then purge a lot of very defensive cards, because I intend to use the... Ooh, that's good. Huh? Huh? Hum? Excuse me? What happened? Deal 36 damage. Trigger's plus one. So it hits the Chosen Champion two times in a row, three times in a row, in fact, and then the King and the Courtesan for some reason? I was really not prepared for that. Um, well, how significantly is this going to throw me off? Pretty significantly, 84, 32 is 116. That's enough to kill you at least. One, two, yeah. And then I can purge one of these, kill you. And then the other one just suddenly died. Uh, okay, so that, that was equally, uh, equally the 
what I am perceiving as possibly a bug. Um, equally broke in my favor and against my favor. So, yay, at least on that front. Well, there's our double battle cry. <laughs> Definitely going to start out with that, so... And yeah, slowing these enemies, like, as soon as I slowed them, they went to only one in their multi-hit. Uh, which makes life a lot easier for us. I really don't need the soul tides from those two. In fact, I'm just going to keep the extra energy so that next turn, should I draw a what lies waiting? There we go. I have the ability instantaneously in hand to double play them. Okay, there's another what lies waiting in hand right now. Do I already go for them, or do I try and use a lot of my powerful cards here and then go again? I go for them now. Because they're all just fuel for the current synergy. Okay. Drop the bolster happily. Drop the Shadow Utility happily. Harness Sin happily as well. Battle Cry we already got out on the field. Side set, good. Okay. So we'll start out with the Cursed Blade, just instantly killing a target for us. Or at least trying to, but it decided at the end to hit the Taxidermist. Yeah, it hit the Taxidermist a couple times in there for some reason. Um, Gonna have to... Hopefully that like it, it's, that's not gonna matter at least in the Void fight, so... I'm comfortable there. A knife and a dark here for vulnerability. Nice. nice. What? Okay, the second trigger is untargeted. It has to be, because it happened to this card as well. Well, it's it's fine. We got the kills, but still. Huh. That's going to be a bit more of a problem in fights like these. Can it... Can it randomly try and hit an immune target? Because if it can do that, we're, we actually, like, have trouble now. Like, suddenly there's a problem. Uh, and this deck didn't really feel like it was ever going to be in a suddenly there's a problem position. Felt like we were pretty, uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, this one seems like it's just draw. Fine. It's all good. Now we have a... Uh, it should be enough still. Scott Harnessin, play a single enough. Not being damaged next turn either. I'm going to purge both of these. Do I play the Grasp? We'll purge it too. Play it. Get up to three overcharge. So now the excess energy that we can hold at any one time in order to start out the chain with the Cursed Blade is significantly higher. And that's, uh, that's, that's worth some. In fact, we're about to see exactly what it is worth. As I purge enough cards here. Yep, it can target immune creatures. Uh, it has to have been able to target immune creatures, otherwise there should be a damage line in this before the dealt two damage to the Nightmare Steed. The Nightmare Steed got the two damage due to the Rusty Scythe, due to gaining Soul Tithe, giving us corruption. Uh, yikes. Yikes. Well, what can we do? I mean, I can use What Lies Waiting two times again right now. And in fact, will. Yep, secondary target of that also went around. Is, am I missing something? Trigger? Because it's happening consistently enough now that I feel like I'm missing something. I mean, there's no keyword for trigger, but it, like, it shouldn't need a keyword. Uh, 
Am I? Okay, those are dead now. There's your vulnerability. And then you die. Uh, two random void stones. Mm, 25 max HP. Mm, could be that either. The fact that I can no longer upgrade any cards makes it really hard for me to justify taking the booster pack in any time this position. I mean, unless I'm specifically looking for like one thing that I'm like, okay, I know that's slow and weakened or some such. Um, I'm taking the two random void stones. We got another black void stone. Wow. Unfortunately, we also now have those two green void stones and I still don't know what to do with them. And you know what I could do? is in the final fight, I could take both these What Lies Waitings out, right? Because I'm about to get the, during the Void fight, the first two cards played will trigger an additional time. And then I could have both the What Lies Waiting be those first two cards that I play in the opening hand, uh, use four energy in order to draw 16 cards in the first turn, get into my second cycle, start getting Soul Tithe already up. Uh, the big problem with that is, uh, well, I'm suddenly going to be taking a huge amount of damage and I really need to be able to, uh, justify the energy after that. I mean, hang on! At the start of each turn, gain one additional energy. Two energy potions actually might be able to justify that for us. Hmm. Interesting. We also probably put more Death Strike into the build at that point because we're, like, suddenly pushing for lethal. I actually may go, like, try and Blitzkrieg the... The void like that in some way. First card played each turn costs two less. Uh, yeah, I think that and the blessing of preparation are the ways we're going to want to go here. All right, Puppet Master. If the fight goes on too long, the Puppet Master, I've heard, will become overwhelming. So let's not let this fight go on too long. Now, if I was wanting a fight to end quickly... I'd probably go for something along the lines a little like this. Uh, look, vulnerability should be up first. Drop the purge. Use the sacrifice. Nice. Nice. It's 100 by itself. Nice. Cool. 207, your turn. That was 400 and almost 70 damage in the first turn right there. Decent, I guess. There's another what lies waiting further in the deck. I can just enough this turn if I'd prefer. I should definitely enough. I also kind of want a charged block here. You know what? I'll do that. I'll play those two. Play charged block. And Opportunity is a killing card. I leave that in hand for the next turn. Now, there are a lot of Banes in our discard at this point. It's entirely possible we don't draw enough to actually continue this kill right now. Um, that's actually kind of looking like the world we might be in, even. 33, yeah. Ooh. Wow, I'm actually going to be defending here. <laughs> Imagine my surprise. Um, okay. I am going to purge, duck, and weave. Okay, purge all of those. Play battle cry. I actually kind of want to play battle cry here two times if possible. Then purge a spirit shield and attack with an opportunity. Rest of our deck is very good. If that helps here at all. I'm going to play that and keep the opportunity in hand. The enemy makes me draw three cards here. Oh, okay. That's not really what I wanted. That's fine. Hopefully. Um, okay, we're in battle round five. Or rather, so the emergency button just triggered. I mean, we're getting pretty close to lethal with those. In fact, we are almost certainly there with just a sacrifice. Great. Let's have preparation. First two cards drawed. 
for your initial time. Drawed, drawn. And it wasn't even drawn, it was played. Okay, just making certain there was no giant mishap that I'd already, uh, already undergone there that I needed to suddenly account for in some way. Well, this is going to be a pretty productive opening turn. I love the idea of just like mad battle crying all of my enemies, but it's definitely just go for the queen and kill here. Um, oh, nice waiting again. Ah, oh, nice. We got to the Cursed Blade eventually. Harness Sin. And it's anything that gave me value on Purge would be better than these Harness Sins right now. All right. Now. I need to find... Wait, that was... That gave me energy, right? No, I purged it enough without needing energy. <clears throat> no, wait. You gain an energy before the purge. Okay, I think I I think I was on four before that. But if I just wasted an energy, I feel pretty bad about it. I'm sorry. Uh, you take that hit. Pop a bolster for the Cursed Blade to come through. Perfect. Then it's literally just opportunities until we win. Nice, and they did the randomization on the targets, but we still managed to pull that through at the very end. Okay, we've got the, the purple void stone. Uh, we've got the two wall eyes waiting, which I think I will actually do the, the, the build that I'd set up previously. The only thing is now I need to know what do I dupe? What else wants to be double played anymore? <laughs> kind of nothing? That's actually a problem. Okay, one of them could easily go into build up. Oh my god. We don't change both. Hang on. Okay, we remove the void stone from this. You now get that. That's fine. We draw eight extra cards in the opening hand. We almost certainly get the second line, uh, what lies waiting. The black void stone goes into the build up over here. You go into the deck. We cut. Uh, I mean, sidestep's never been useful for us. We'll cut sidestep. Um, then after that, what do we actually play? Almost nothing. I'll put the enough into you. And then I think I'm honestly quite settled. Okay. Extra hand size, double extra energy, single crippling, single strength, and a health potion. The health potion unnecessary, but you gotta take it all in because you can't take it with you. This is gonna be exciting. Come on. Okay. Do it. We did get the other what lies waiting. It's perfect. Uh, so I can double play this already. Nice. Uh, okay. I might double the Cursed Blade effect this- I don't- I don't know what's about to happen, but it's gonna be fun. Uh, purge the Harness Sin. Purge the Duck and Weave. Enemy is already vulnerable. Let's start with one big Cursed Blade. I'm gonna purge another Harness Sin and another Harness Sin just for the road. Draw four cards. Hopefully we get the Siphon Blade back. Literally, it's the only card we didn't get. Oh. Uh, that's okay, though. We do have a Power Drawing Hand, which gets back to it. Purge, 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 purge. The Battle Cry as well. And the Charge Block. Get even more Rage. Okay. Now I'll double build up. Six hundred twelve, six hundred ninety-seven, and five hundred and seventeen to round out the fight. That is a turn one void kill and impossible. That's our draw, dude, baby. This card says draw on it. Let's click that one and master that card. Hey, uh, a one minute forty-four uh, success in impossible right there. We tighten this up a little bit. Of course, that was definitely a very aggressive deck. Nothing really lived past turn five. For the moment, though. 
four, actually, for the, uh, the emergency button. For the moment, though, my name is Ron Rhapsody. The name of the game is involved with the void. Hopefully, you've been enjoying yourselves. So, to play this in the description down below with all my content of the game. Pass for the future, and hopefully, we'll see you next time.